<laughs> it's another Monday. Hey, your brother Zoe Williams back in the building. I'm a little excited. I'm a little excited today. I hope everybody is good. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Come on, excited. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm excited. I don't know what I'm excited about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> why, Jay? No, nah, I'll be honest. I can tell you why I'm excited. Okay. Um, my latest book is coming along exceptionally well. Hey. And uh, I got two teams working on it. Well, that I work with. Uh, and I tell you, I, I got this older sister down in, uh, she's in Atlanta now. Uh, and I, she's about 70 years old and I sit with her and she asks me a ton of questions and <coughs> she records it and then sends it back to me. And then I, I edit it and then I send it to an editor. They re-edit it and then I edit that and send it back and they edit it again and it's a whole process. But um, how this thing is developing is, is really got me thinking like, yo, this, this, is, this is what I was born for, kinda. Um, my mind has never been this clear in terms of a concept that's dope in terms of executing the concept like there's no gray area in the concept for me you know it, it is exceedingly clear i'm really excited about it uh, and and really soon you know i'm going to let you guys in on it really soon i'm going to tell you what it is i'm going to tell you uh, what it's about i'm going to tell you the concept like, I, I'm really excited. Uh, but let me get right to it. Listen, if you guys have stopped supporting Total Package Energy, shame on you. I need you guys to support that, to support that black-owned business. Um, they deserve our support, you know? Um, we buy energy drinks. We buy Celsius. We buy C4. We buy Monster, we buy all kinds of things, but what I want is for everybody to support a black-owned business that creates energy shots, right? And I think, you know, if you wanna, uh, you wanna spend your money and you want to get that energy shot, it might not be, you know, as sweet or it might not have as many chemicals or whatever, but I think you should, should support Total Package Energy. Absolutely. I really do. I'm urging everybody to cash mob them. If you've never heard of the term cash mob, cash mob means all of us do it as a collective, as a group. We cash mob the black owned businesses. When we started the Zoe What Show back in 2012, it was a sister that used to come on. Her name was Veronica Conway. People who are uh, loyalists to uh, the Zoe What Morning Show understand that name, Veronica Conway. V Veronica was, you know, an amazing contributor uh, to the Zoe What Morning Show. She added femininity, she added depth and insight and spirituality. We miss Veronica Conway. Uh, but she was the one who uh, coined the phrase cash mob. Right. Mm -hmm. And what she was basically saying was any black owned business that we, you know, promote uh, on this uh, platform, we should cash mob. In other words, a collective. Uh, oftentimes there's a pattern where you see people who want to support and they support, you know, people sp support sporadically. Mm -hmm. You may have uh, a thousand people in your chat, but only 20 people might support. I just think. Um, Sometimes we miss the concept of what that means. It has greater impact when we all do it. And keep this in mind, when we all support the channel, channels such as this, channels that we frequent, channels that we like the content, that means one person doesn't have to put down $100 or $200. I mean, it's rare that that happens, but when it does happen, we're happy to receive that. Yes, Ronnie Khan is what uh, is what Jeff Brown used to call her. Ronnie Khan, right? Uh, 
But the reality of it is when we all support, we all can give a smaller amount collectively. But if everybody is supporting, that smaller amount still has a greater impact. Uh, you know, there's 76 people in here right now, which is weird. Uh, our subscribers have gone up 3,000 subscribers in the last month, oh, month and a good. half. Oh, that's good. We are 73,400 subscribers. Remember, we have been struggling to get to 72,000, right, for three years. Uh -huh. We were stuck on 71,000 for three years. So uh -huh. now all of a sudden we are 73,400. But, yeah, so just think about it. If you got, if there's 80 people in here right now. Everybody hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the like button. Let's get in the algorithm. Let's get in the algorithm. Let's get in the algorithm. If everybody in here gave, it's 80 people right now, we're going to get up to about four or 500. Ooh, hey, 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 oh, hold on, Lord. hold on. Don't, don't start talking. Right, we're going to get up to about 400 or 500. If everybody gave $5, that's a very impactful day. All right, so everybody hit that like button, hit the share button. Also, if you want to give directly to your brother. Oh, if you want to put directly into my pocket ministry, all you got to do is hit that dollar sign, so what oh, netter. Yeah. Hit my cash app, shoot it to me direct. We'd appreciate it. Please continue to support, 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 support. Hit the like yes. button, hit the like button, hit the like button. Now, go to Total Package too, Energy. To. Tell them Zoe Williams sent you. TotalPackageEnergy.com. Tell them Zoe Williams sent you. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I want you guys to support RussellHerbals.com. Absolutely. Like I said, it's springtime, so we're getting into detox season. Um, of course, it's April 8th. There's a, a, a an eclipse going on right now. Yes, my dumb ass went outside and looked at the sun for a quick second. It, it was fucking me up like, this is, this is, you know, the, 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 the like blindness, Charles playing. the lights. But I did see the little apple bite out of uh, the sun and it's happening right now. Uh, everybody go out there. Uh, now don't go outside and look at it. If you got the 3D glasses, check it out. Uh, but it's detox time, right? And we're going through a very powerful celestial transit as well. Dr. Russell is, for me, a contemporary of Dr. Sebi. Uh, he has been doing this since the 70s, and he's in his 70s, ex-NFL football player uh, for the Los Angeles Rams. Brother is one of the most solid people I know. Can you guys go to RussellHerbals.com and get your springtime detox? I want you guys to support Russell Herbals. Also, oh, there he's also opening up a, um, what is that, clinic or type of business in Bangkok. I saw that on online this morning i love it man him and his nephew uh -huh. i love it we appreciate the super chats that are coming in already we got two of them so far michael lewis yes what's michael. that fast cash and michael lewis uh -huh. keep doing Fantastic. your thing yes uh -huh. yes yes we are urging everybody to participate some way or another somehow or another the listen the super chat button is that little dollar sign down at the bottom of the chat room Please hit it early and often. We're not asking you to give a lot. We're just asking you to be consistent, and we're asking you all to give. Please hit, hit, hit. Or hit if mine? you don't, yes, Sarah. <laughs> let, let me get to it. Dang. No. Y'all go over there and hit Sarah. Dollar sign Sundays with Sarah. No, we couldn't do this show without Sarah. Can y'all get over there and support Sarah? Please, please, please. Please, oh please, God. please. I'm on day 14 of fasting. Yeah, it's a real situation. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Also, I continue fly. to support uh, Shepherd Sweets. Yes. If you like cakes and cookies and confectionery delights. That, listen, this is my baby mama. That's all. The mother of my two. Uh, she's not a baby mama. No. She's you understand? She has her master's degree in organizational leadership. Uh, from one uh, very top flight university here in Southern California. And she's gorgeous. One of which my uncle, uh, my uncle sits on the board of that particular university. You know, this is, this is a very sharp woman. She's a director of uh, uh, a school. 
uh, right now, um, she runs the whole school. Uh, she's an educator. She, this is something, this is her passion, Shepherd's Sweets, right? This is her passion. This is something that uh, she's always loved to do and bake and things of that nature. She makes candies and all types of stuff. But uh, make no mistake, uh, <laughs> she's a cold piece of work. She raised, uh, <laughs> she helped raise, uh, you know, my oldest son, who's a, a professional ball player, my yeah. youngest daughter, who's an act, or, or my only daughter, who is an actress, you know, got her degree as well from LMU in theater, you know, I'm very proud of them. Uh, this woman poured, uh, you know, poured into those kids in such a way that, uh, I'll be forever indebted to her. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, no matter what I do in life, uh, no matter what I accomplish in life, I got to break off a tithe to her. I don't give a damn what it is that I do in life. I got a tithe to this woman because... <clears throat> The level of love and attentiveness and care that uh, she poured into the two children we had, mm -hmm. uh, it taught me how much, how much learning I had to do in terms of empathizing, in terms of, in terms of just being present, in terms of being aware, you know, just watching her deal with the kids and it made me a better father because by her blueprint I recognized what it how I needed to step up and where you know I was falling off you know uh, and I will be indebted to this woman forever she gave me two college grads like I said my oldest son is a pro ball player but he has his degree in philosophy uh, when she saw that he had a talent for basketball, when she saw that he had a talent for basketball and he started to pull away from her, she did something that it surprised the hell out of me. You know? Like, it was like overnight. My, my, he's nine years old and he's telling her, Mom, you're my best friend. <laughs> you know, and then by 10, Mom, don't hug me in public. Mom, don't, hey, hold on, fall back. You know, by 10, he's pulling away. 11 and 12, he's totally with dad. Now it's, I'm going to, um, dad, you hooping? Hold on, wait for me, let me get my shoes. You know what I'm saying? So by then it's, you know, he starts pulling away and she did something that I never thought, you know, possible. Mm -hmm. she, she was like, it, it hurts me, but he got to go with you. You know, he not my he not my little new new no more. He not my best friend no more. You know, she she was like, you you take the lead with him. Find one hundred ways. Yeah, she, <laughs> she got out of the way and kind of just allowed me to do what I needed to do with my son and. Mm -hmm. You know, that was beautiful. She understood, like, it's your, it was almost like she was like, it's your shift now. Wow. I done nurtured him. I done poured into him. I done loved on him. Tag, you it. It's your, you <laughs> in full time now. She was like, you were more supportive when he was a baby and I was more hands on. But now he trying to do, he trying to do you in a lot of ways, hey. you know? Because I was playing hoop and he was getting he was getting upset he was getting angry he couldn't get on the court I said you not you not big enough I'm playing against grown men you're gonna get tossed around out here and you know I would make him wait and then finally you know I let him on the court at 13 and I told the guys don't take it easy on him they was tossing his ass around oh my god. But it didn't take long for him to start cooking. And when he started cooking, that's when I stopped playing. I said, oh, no, <laughs> you're not going to catch me up out of this motherfucker. But uh, their mother, I just want to, man, she's an educator. So She's awesome. From, from the very beginning, she taught them how to read. She, mm -hmm. she would supplement 
whatever was happening, you know, in school, she was doing above and beyond what the school was bringing home. So the kids were always really, really sharp. And that's why, because people be asked, why do you still support or promote uh, that candy place? Because this is a business that is owned by the mother of my two oldest children. And she does everything with love. And she does everything with love. Mm-hmm. And, she, and she's a sweetheart and, and she's a good person. And she gave me some amazing children, man. And, and believe me, it was a fucking gift. She gave me these children, man. Yeah. And when I talk to them, to, I talk to them every day. So yeah, I'm gonna promote her until I die. And I think it's only right. So let's cash mob, you yes. guys. Let's cash mob. Shepherdsweets.com. Uh, like I said, I'm indebted to the young lady, and, I, and I'm very appreciative of her. And it is what it is. What else do I have to promote? Oh, veal oh. sauce? Yeah. If it ain't veal, it ain't real. Oh, uh, bill, another black saying. owned business, man. Um, yeah, I think it is a question because oftentimes, you know, we live in this society. Let me just get real. We're, we live in a negative society. Mm. A motherfucker is justified for holding a grudge against you and labeling you mm-hmm. and making you look like you ain't shit because you did something in yester time. Yester time. Right? Yester time gets to color who you are as you move forward through time. Mm. Right? If forgiveness was real for most people, they would see you as you are right now. But most people can only see you as you are or as you were in the time that you hurt them. That's why I call it yester time, right? They can only see you at the moment of the revelation of whatever it may be. Thank you for the cash app. Let's get that cash app rolling, guys. MJ Hester, if I see it, I'm gonna shout you out. If I see it, I'm gonna shout you out. But yeah, most people see you at the moment of the hurt. They don't see you as you are now. They don't see you as you, you may have, you hurting them may have brought a revelation to you that changed you and grew you up. But, you know, they see you at the moment of the hurt, and it's unfortunate. We live in this kind of society. So we live in a negative society, a society that perpetuates negativity. And negativity, in, in a lot of ways, has more of a lasting impact than positivity. The way our minds are set up is, as long as I'm getting what I want, then things are good. And unfortunately, that's just simply not the way things work. You have to grow up in uncomfortable moments. You have to find peace in uncomfortable moments. You have to find homeostasis in uncomfortable moments. Many people think they can only find homeostasis in peace or in quiet. You know, I make a distinction between peace and quiet. That's two totally different things. Two totally different things. Quiet is an escape. Peace can be found in the storm, like the eye of the storm. My Lord. Right? The eye of the storm is the center of the storm. And if you notice, the more uh, defined the eye is, the stronger the storm is. Absolutely. And in the damn eye is absolute peace. Absolutely. If you from Texas, I heard a Texas boy say this, if you from Texas... The hurricane will roll through like a freight train and then you'll see that uh, uh, you'll get through the first edge of it. Mm -hmm. Then you'll get the eye will come over. And he said we would run out during the eye of the storm and grab certain things and try to board up the windows real quick before the back end of the storm come through. That back end gets you. Do you see what I'm saying? Again, grown people know how to live. With other grown people, what makes you grown? Your acceptance of the humanity that is you and your acceptance of the humanity that is your partner. Acceptance doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. I need you to understand. Acceptance doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. What do you mean, Zoe? 
oh, I'm just gonna continue to tolerate somebody's bad uh, behavior or somebody's reluctance to change or somebody's uh, desire to wanna stay the same. I'm tired of motherfuckers talking that this is who I am shit. Yeah, okay, this is who you are right now, but this is not who you have to be moving forward, right? Mm-hmm. Man. Can I say something for that point? Um, sure. I think a lot of people are, are, are only good for the fitting room. Ooh. In the fitting room, that's when you realize what, what fits you, what don't fit you, what fits you but don't look good on you. Mm. <clears throat> uh, because it don't go with your body type or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like it's so many different factors, and a lot of things we we everything when we go to the store we don't buy. Some things are for us to leave at the store, leave it at, the, and leave that it at be the store. in relationship marketplace and stuff like that as well. Some people that you know what I'm saying, and sometimes you get something and it look good in the lights at the store, baby. You get out in real in the real world, you realize, baby, that baby, go go change. Yeah, that ain't it. That ain't it, baby. That ain't that ain't it. That is not your ministry. That ain't it. No, it's but but good. everybody's not fit for the transition of everything's not worth you bringing home. I'm gonna say this too. Nobody has the right to try to look right. Somebody go meme it. Come on. Somebody go meme that. Put it out there. Nobody got the right to try to look right. Everybody want to look right. <laughs> Everybody want to look like they're a fucking guru. Everybody want to look like they're spiritual. Mm. Do you know what spirituality really looks like? It looks like pain. It looks like tears. It looks like crying. It looks like depression. It looks like de uh, it looks like schizophrenia. It looks like a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to look right. Everybody want to present like they got it together. I'm going to tell you right now, you can front like it's all good. Mm-hmm. You can front like you're aligned. That shit hard. Everybody want to look right. You got to stop trying to look right and be okay with suffer. Listen, with suffering through growth. Hmm. That's how suffering ends. Mm. You go through it. A lot of people don't want to go through it. They just want to get what they want. And when they get what they want, they think, I've been, ple I've been blessed. I done came through the other side. I have grown. Let me tell you something. Getting what you want is not an indicator that you've grown. Not at all. Sometimes getting what you want uh, uh, is, is, is an indicator that God is testing to see if that's really what you want. Mm. So sometimes you gotta have it in your hand to Ooh. understand its weight. Ooh. <laughs> sometimes to know what's right is collecting the shit that's left. Sometimes you gotta <laughs> have it in your hand <laughs> to really be able to gauge the weight of it. <laughs> oh. A lot of oh people God, don't know, God, man. God, God, God. A lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't understand. Mm -hmm. They don't. That's, ooh. You understand? That's a me? word. You preaching today on the eclipse? A lot <laughs> of people don't understand. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just here trying to help. That's ooh. all I can say. I'm just here <laughs> trying to help. Let me run through some topics. Oh, ooh. can you put up that grown folks business flyer? What? What grown folks business? Yeah, uh, I let me you flyers. I, I said, you. wait, hold on, sugar. Let oh, me see. Man, here we go. This right here and this. That, That's oh, me and Grady. But I, I'll promote that. That's fine. Is that not it? Okay, wait a minute. Hold on in there. Hey, Roger Raglan, thank you for the cash app. That's not it, but I'll promote that well, right now, too. I don't too. see the other one. Oh, grown folk. Didn't I say leave it up? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going back. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. We got a lot of stuff to promote. <laughs> hey, me and Grady, we going to do this May 10th, 2024. We doing a relationship. I am holding a relationship roundtable with all comedians, with Grady. What? <laughs> oh, man, this is going to be crazy. Hey, Sarah, pull it up so we can see uh, the address. 
There, yes. There, there we go. Let me put it, is, it down. There yeah. it is. Hey, that's Nipsey Hussle's old spot. 6111 oh, Gramercy Place, suite number one, Los Angeles, California. Thank you, Listen, <clears throat> me and Ray Grady, I'm doing a relationship roundtable with all comedians. This is going to be crazy. Me and Ray Grady together. Of course, this is his birthday weekend. And oh, I'm going to support Ray Grady <laughs> on this one. We're going to act a complete full Friday, May 10th, 2024. Now. Am I going to be there? Absolutely, you're going to okay. be there. <laughs> now, let's do grown folks business. Oh, oh, shit. This is this Friday. Yay. If you're in L.A., I'm going to be at my spot, Drove Stogies, the cigar lounge that I'm always at. Always. Oh, man, we doing a relationship roundtable there. The relationship roundtable with Zoe Williams. This is going to be fire. When I tell you this is going to be absolutely fire, I'm about to teach a full-out lecture on relationships. As a relationship failure, I got a lot to teach. You feel me? This is going to be exceptional. If you're in the Los Angeles area, I'm going to have a bunch of clinicians in the audience that are that will be contributing. This is a, a interactive kind of event here. Uh, it's gonna be question and answers. There's gonna be topics. It's gonna be like a live voice of reason radio show. Grown folk business, drove stogies. This Friday, April 12th, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's gonna be lit. It's gonna be fire. If and you're in L.A., get out, get out, get out. You see the address on the side there, 1322 mm -hmm. North La Brea Avenue. It's for singles. It's for married Aye. folk. It's for couples, uh, cohabitating, all that. Y'all get in. Y'all get in. And if y'all come, I love Grey Goose. Thank you. Back to you, Zoe. Uh, hey, my lord. <laughs> okay, so let me just talk about Don Staley real quick. Woo! Come on. First off, I didn't even watch the game. You know why? Oh. For what? Okay. Them sisters, that sister has always been a winner. Always. I knew them sisters she was coaching. They were supposed to win last year. Yep. And got tripped up. I didn't watch it, not because I didn't want to support her, because I knew what the outcome was going to be. No disrespect to Caitlin Clark, but you got to realize, man, white America roots for their own, white people. It's 83 million white families in America. Y'all saw what ABC did. How you going to congratulate the champs but put a picture of Caitlin up? Oh, yeah, CNN. We know how you, it was CNN, that's right. Mm -hmm. You know how people want to prop up their own? It's little subtle tricks like that. Listen. Don Staley has been a winner from the jump. 91, Naismith, Player of the Year. 92, Naismith, Player of the Year. 2020, Naismith, Coach of the Year. 2022, Naismith, Coach of the Year. Been 23, there. 24, come on. She's a winner. She won in the Olympics. Yeah. She won in high school. She won in college. She won in the pros. List WNBA. She's been a winner the whole time. And... A lot of times we talk about, you know, positive male mentors. Uh, and a lot of times people don't understand what organized sports brings to individuals. Mm -hmm. Organized sports brings a sense of shared responsibility, right? Being, uh, being responsible for your end of the bargain, collaboration, teamwork, cooperation. That's what this sports thing does for a lot of people. And I would say Don is a mentor more than a coach. Yeah. Because I believe the players who play for her, not only do they understand the game, but I do believe they understand life a little better. She's like a she's like a female mixture of Jawan Howard and Deion Sanders. 
No, so I would even, or I, I see what you mean in terms of personality. Yeah. Yeah, but I would say she's the female Coach K. Dope. Okay, in, in relation to the college basketball, yeah, exactly. absolutely. absolutely. I would say I, I, she's I, yeah. the female Coach K. Yeah. And we have to acknowledge her. And a lot of times the media is very quiet, you know, about, you know, black accomplishment. And I think that this is very important that we uh, raise our sister up and that we show her love and that we pour what uh, mainstream society might not want to pour. And hey, L.S. Jefferson, thank you for that. And let me just say this, we, we see it all the time. Yes, thank you. Uh, last year, when LSU beat Iowa, it was Jill Biden who offered a joint invitation for winner and loser to come to the White House. That don't happen. That's not normal. I'm telling you, this racism, this white supremacy is subtle. Oh, let's get both of, both of the teams. That's no. typically not how it works. Not at all. If LSU wins the NCAA championship, guess what? They go to the White House. Not the losers, but because they had a great white hope, no disrespect to... Caitlin Clark, because uh, she can play. Don't get it twisted. She can play ball. Oh, just absolutely. as somebody who's been around ball, who played hoop, who raised a pro player, she can hoop. But just like Tarazi said, listen, it's easy for you to do that against 18-year-olds. Uh-huh, baby. When you come up here and you play the WNBA. You don't think it's going to be the same, boy. It, it's not going to be quite the same. But I do believe Caitlin Clark is going to ball out. I do believe she's going to ball out. She has the skill set. You know, she, she indeed has the skill set. But remember, last year they tried to pull her in and her team into the White House when that was really for Angel Reese and LSU and their team alone. So, you know, white America still wants to root for its own even when they lose. But we have to give this team their credit. They showed up and they showed out, went 38 and 0, didn't yeah, lose a, a single game. Season. Uh, uh, the coach, Don Staley, is 109 and 3. 109 wins and 3, three losses. losses. Think on that. And women's basketball, no one has seen that since um, the UConn. Yeah. Think on that. That's crazy. Like, and uh, she Pat Summit didn't even have a record like that. Yeah, she brought that to the Gamecocks. South Carolina, SEC, real-ass, mm -hmm. you know, conference. That ain't no weak-ass conference. So very proud of her, very proud of the work that was put in. We appreciate it. You guys should show your love for her. Yeah. And uh, let's let's keep it pushing. I like that. Did you know what happened with the um, the interview right before the game? They had a, a you know a media thing or whatever, and one of this this right wing media group asked her her stance on transgender uh, uh, female athletes and everything, and so she she eventually answered the question, but she after she answered it, she told them she said. You know what he said? She said, like, that's really unfair because now instead of people focusing on the games and the the girls that are the, the young ladies that are playing and stuff like that and their accomplishments. Now you're going to have people blowing up my page about this to distract from what we really here for. But that's what y'all do. Well, and I appreciate it for calling all, it out. All, all sports is entertainment and it's mm -hmm. a distraction. All of it. Yeah. The only reason why we're talking about it because niggas in here like to be entertained. And we even had a goofy motherfucker say some shit like, who cares? There's a lot of people who care about entertainment. Imagine if you took entertainment away, which mm. is the opiate of society. Between entertainment and religion, if you took them two motherfuckers away, do you know people would literally go crazy from boredom? Yeah. Because society is not set up for you to look itself. Society is set up for you to look outside of self. All the damn time. Who gonna come into my life and make things better? 
Who going to treat me the way I'm supposed to be treated? Who going to show up in the way that I need them to show up? That's how society is set up. My team. Niggas is running around wearing jerseys. Yeah. <laughs> fan, listen, fan is the short version of fanatic. Somebody who's fucking crazy. A fanatic is crazy. Do you understand? That's what sports is set up to do. Let's keep your mind off of the fact that, guess what? You got about 32 years left of mm -hmm. life. Oh, my Lord. Let's keep your mind off of the fact that your life really has very little meaning. I know you, listen, I know this shit sounds hard to take. And this is not about. Listen, to how, I'm not talking about anybody in particular or personally. I'm not. Listen, your life has very little meaning. Many people extrapolate meaning from their work. Many, a pe many people extrapolate meaning from what they have. Many people extrapolate meaning from their relationship. Do you see? Most people don't know their own true value. Most people don't really know it. They, they, they extrapolate it from external things. This is an inside-out world. Excuse me, an outside-in world. I get, right, I get my meaning from the outside. But it's supposed to be an inside-out world. So although this is very, you know, noteworthy, and should be acknowledged, it has very little meaning, right, in the grand scheme of things, right? For those young women who work their ass off to get it, they earned it, it has more meaning for them, right? I just want y'all to think about that. Where are we at now? What's our next story? I don't know. Hey, Lloyd, um, let's see here. Um, hey, and don't forget, guys, don't forget. Let's cash mob my cash app. Hit me up right now. Let's see. We got MJ Hester. We got Roger Raglan. And we got LS Jefferson. You guys are the first three people to shoot me a cash app. Let's talk about. Uh, damn, man. Chance the Rapper real quick. You want to go to Chance? All right. Yeah. Heartbreak Hotel on three. Okay. Hey, thank you, KTB. Thank you. We appreciate it. I don't know anything about the brother's relationship. I don't know anything about salt of the earth. He, he sacrificed his career for a woman. Now the same woman is leaving him. Lesson, a man will push his happiness aside for his woman. But a woman... Will push her man aside for her happiness. I don't agree with that. I want to know if I, I want to see who really agrees with that. I want to know who. You better tell me your <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> you better tell me your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's an interesting. Who agrees with that? A man will push his happiness aside for his woman, but a woman will push her man aside for her happiness. True Monger says women do do that. Wow, that we what? LOL, I wish we could call in for real, for real. You do know we can oh. bring in. I guess on Skype. You do know we can bring in people from the chat. By the way, you y'all yeah. know that, right? Yeah. I didn't think y'all knew that. We got the technology here to bring y'all on. I wanna know. I wanna know. Who you better tell me your thoughts. Hey, <laughs> hey. Lloyd know. Jefferson, thank you. I mean, Lord Lloyd Hinton, thank you. <laughs> Little Lloyd, is that true? I don't think Men so. throw their happiness. I, in it, historically speaking, this is 
it, it, this is false because a lot of women were smart and educated and they did not pursue it in order to stay home and take care of the family before the whole feminist movement and all the kind of stuff. Now, if you're talking about nowadays, maybe that's more pliable nowadays. But historically speaking, women have been the ones so that have not been the ones that have pursued their hopes and dreams in order to keep it in the family unit together. So let me let me be clear. You're going to use the whole historical piece. Thank oh, you. Well, I'm a, you, oh, I, <laughs> you want to know? K Rush. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Rusan. Thank you. We appreciate it. So you want to use the whole historical piece to just roundabout way say yes for today, but no for yesterday. So you can say yes and no. What? You use the, the history to validate how that wasn't the case back in the day. And now you're saying, but that may be the case today. Dana Dorsey, thank you. What just happened? Which is basically a yes and a no. Uh, you said no for back in the day and yes for today. How are you confused in what you said? I'm not saying, I'm not, not saying yes for today. I said that it was, that was a very, very, I mean, in the, back in the day or whatever, that was just plain fact. But even though you had women that they wanted to be homemakers and stuff like that, as far as things are concerned, now I think that it's different because a lot of girls in my generation or whatever, I, I was saying about they had kids young. So a lot of them, they kept their body up and everything like that. So now they're in a position where I'm going to pursue my happiness or whatever. My kids is grown. They almost out of the house. I'm finna do me. And that's what society around my age is what's going on right now. So and a lot of those women yes don't give a fuck. right now. Uh-huh. Okay. And a no for the past. Uh, I think it's still more, you know, <laughs> I'm a side on the, on the thing of the woman. But at the same time, you're right. I'm like... <laughs> A lot of women now, it's just like, it's about me. It's about uh, what are the guys going to do for me now. It's like, it's, it's very, uh, a lot of women do, today is narcissistic, especially once they spend their money on their BBLs. Back to you, Zoe. <laughs> Somebody said, wait, True Munger says super thotting. <laughs> no, because what's crazy is I yes, said you gave us a yes time. and a no. I did. And then I said, it's no for the past, and it's kind of yes for today. Of it course, some but not applies to both the past and today, some but not all, right? So you can have some variance there, some, 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 gray, some, some gray, some nuanced areas there. But for the most part, that's what we're talking about. Somebody but it's totally not, dark outside. Looks like 11 p.m. That's right. But there's not a lot of dudes that are sacrificing their career, like quit the cap. These dudes, a lot of them don't have one. I don't want to. You sacrifice your career as a rapper and you're 40? Get the fuck out of here. Like, why am I? You sacrifice your hoop dreams, my nigga? Like, you wasn't even on, you weren't even on your high school basketball team, but you talking about you finna play in the NBA. Get out of here, my nigga. They be wanting people to. Wait, I now get, you getting into something. Yes. Now we coming into something. Because I do believe that uh, the point that you're making, like, if you haven't gotten it together or pulled it together, brother, or, or built something, created something, started something, finished something, accomplished something, totally agree with you. Uh, you don't really have anything to sacrifice. <laughs> right? And if you don't really have anything to sacrifice, then what is, she, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Like, she can move on and do whatever, I guess. But if you put... Let me give you an example. Every time somebody like Muhammad Ali stepped in the ring, mm -hmm. he was sacrificing a piece of his life for his woman, for his kids, for his family. He was literally getting some brain cells knocked the fuck out of his head every time he got hit. Yeah. Or if somebody's playing football and they get in there and, and they're doing it for their family or whatever, you are literally, you know, sacrificing your body, sacrificing, you know, your health, CTE, right? Mm-hmm. 
So in that regard, I think there's more of a point to say, oh, he sacrificed everything. He sacrificed his career for his woman. Uh, now the same woman is leaving him. I don't know what Chance the Rapper sacrificed for his woman. But I do know many women, um, Zoe, I made a, uh, a mistake on that amount. How can I, uh, you talking about on Cash App? Do you want me to send it back to you? Because I'll send it back to you if you want. And I usually don't conduct whole Cash App conversations through uh, <laughs> the super chat or chatting. Uh, what was I saying before I got pulled away? Yeah, I don't really know what he sacrificed. I don't know their story like that. I don't either. Like, but like I was saying, I, I think many women today, because women have been oppressed uh, by a patriarchal society, many women today find great pleasure in ending relationships. They find great pleasure in uh, shutting relationships down. Right, breaking up, like, I mean, what do they call it? Separation elation, you know, for many, for, for, for many women, especially modern women of today. Um, let's move past this story. I'm sorry for them. I hope they figure it out. That was a great question. Yeah. I want you guys to finish the conversation, you know, on out into the blogosphere. What's the next topic? Uh, the next topic has to be... Wait, before like, we get there. Okay. Oh, before, Lord have mercy. Before okay. we get there. Can you put up grown folk business? This Friday, Zoe Williams is in Inglewood. If everybody in L.A. don't come out, I want the meet and greet. I'm going to have my books on deck. If you've never gotten my book, you'll be able to get an autographed, signed copy of it. Yo, come see your brother, Grown yeah. Folks Business. The there. Relationship Roundtable with Zoe Williams at Drobe Stogies. We're going to be in there turned up. It's a two-hour event. Bring your woman. They got a full bar in there. I'm going to have slides and shit up on the screen. It's going to be incredible. Relationship Roundtable, man. 1322 North La Brea Avenue, April 12th. This Friday, you can't miss it. Your brother Zoe is going to be on complete fire. Come support, 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 support. And especially support, support. if you're a single black man that is grown, please. Can y'all put was something on Sarah's cash app? <laughs> what? Please, please put something on Sarah's cash app. So when she meet the single tall, dark, the and shangle. handsome man, <laughs> She'll have her little perfume and fume on. Oh, and huh. She'll be all cuted and booted. Come hey, on. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, come out. It's gonna be fly. Come out, support yes. your brother Zoe Williams. Trust I'm me. Excited. It's gonna be ridiculous. And get there soon because, like I said, it's gonna get crowded. It's gonna be rambunctious. People gonna be drinking. People gonna be smoking their cigars. They're gonna be having a ball. And and it's gonna be more than entertaining it's going to be inspirational it's going to be riveting mm -hmm. it's going to be thought provoking everybody get down there all right grown folk business friday april 12th 7 p.m drobe stogies legendary drobe stogies cigar lounge and if you get a chance you might as well just become a member when you get there now next story please next story is bam Yes. I just want to ask a quick question because Sarah got it like mother, like daughter. Yes. But is this is this also like mother or like daughter, like father? Huh? No, he was no because Russell Simmons was older. Russell Simmons is older, but ain't they looking for him too? They're looking for who? Russell Simmons. Yeah. Sarah, you lost. No, I'm lost because this dude, he's older. Like, he, that's why I said it because Kamarly Simmons was like, was 16 or 17 when she got with Russell Simmons? And he was like, what, 3,000? It's both ways. If she young as fuck fucking with an old nigga, it's both ways. An old nigga fucking with a young woman, right? Isn't it both? 
Jeffrey Brown, what up, what up? You can't just let one side off the hook. What the fuck was Kimora doing fucking with if it's not cool, right? Mm -hmm. 17, right? What you doing fucking with Russell Simmons anyway? That's why I'm saying it's both ways. If it's like mother, right? Mm -hmm. Like daughter. Yeah. Could it also be like daughter, like father? Because he like young women just like the old man she kissing. Yeah, I'm talking about, but I'm talking about her. I wasn't talking about him. Yeah, of course, it was one way. It was unidirectional. I'm saying, no, it's bidirectional for her. Okay, okay, okay. But, but Kimora was getting a daddy. She's getting a great-grandfather. Yeah, this is crazy. He's, uh, what is he, 42 years older than her? 43 years older than her? Man, it's like, oh, my, they skin feel different. I dated an old Jeffrey nigga. Brown, thank you for the cash app. Thank you, Jeff. Man, that's, uh, I mean, my last situation, what, we're 18 years apart. Hmm. In my last situation, he was three years older, still, like, light years apart. <laughs> I just think this is creepy. This is, this is where it gets a little too far, in my opinion. Really? Um, yeah, he's going to be dead in 15 minutes. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, no disrespect. <laughs> if it's 44 years. Me for tonight, somebody said it's 44 girl. years. 44 years. <laughs> Won't correct. you know that I love 44 you. years difference. That's a lot. That's a lot. 44? Do you know? Wow. And, 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 and as you a father. You could drink twice. As a father uh, of a daughter. My daughter taught me a lot. Fuck y'all. My daughter taught me a lot about how to be a man. Um, my daughter taught me a lot about how, you know, like I said, I didn't show up in certain scenarios or I didn't show up in the correct way. She taught me a lot about my own emotional immaturity she taught me a lot about how to nurture and protect women. This is coming from my daughter. And, and organically, like our, our kids turn out to be our gurus in a lot of cases. And especially if they're allowed to do so. My, my, my daughter taught me a lot. And I, all I can say is, <laughs> if my daughter came home, my daughter's 24. If she came home with a dude that was seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen years older than me, I'ma have a problem. Yeah. And what I don't see, it seemed like Kimora or Russ got a problem with this. You don't think they have a problem? I we ain't seen nothing. They ain't. They ain't talking about, I would have a problem. Kissing you is all Okay, sorry. Too soon. Yeah, like, I would have, and, and you know, you can't judge what, what turned people on. You can't judge, you know. You can't judge, it, but God damn, this is far. I would be, I would show up on the beach. Me as a father, I would show up and be like, uh, what in the entire fuck is going on here? It's almost like he, like, she's like his adopted daughter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was, he just so happened to be. This is a Asian. granddaughter. Yeah. At this point, this is yeah. a granddaughter. Great granddaughter. It's so funny how the standards of beauty of, that men have at his age for, like, oh, I, like, want to. They can basically get, when you have that amount of money, get whatever you know, kind of female that you like. You're this young little girl. She looks like she has no hair on her body. Just, you know, she's, you know, and he can just have his total pick. That is well, crazy. What's, what's cold is he going to be fucked up because she's only 21. Her brain isn't even done developing. By 25, she's going to be an entirely different motherfucker. That's only four short years away. That's like school, four years of school. She, 
She's going to be an entirely different motherfucker, and she's going to show up different. That's the danger of dating young. When you're dating young, you're dating a process that's near its beginning. Do you understand? That's, that's the problem. And at any moment, they could have a whole fucking epiphany and become somebody else. And whatever you thought the connection was, no, it ain't that no more. That's when you date really young like that. Uh, and then for me, I see it as a bit pervy on the white dude's part. Yeah, I was scared to be having kids around someone yeah. that, that likes things that young. Yeah, you know what like, I'm saying? she's <laughs> young, young. Like, if she was in college, they would still be saying, yo, that's a kid. They still call the, the, the students in college kids. You know, this is a good kid. He's coming here. He's put the work in. She's a good kid. She, she's been on the team for a couple of years now. They still call them kids at this age. She's not fully developed. And to me, it's very pervy to be on some old, I can date 44 years younger. I'd be uncomfortable at 14 years younger. And I've had a girl, uh, I dated a woman that was 14 years younger than me, and I was uncomfortable for several years. I dated a woman that was 18 years younger than me, and I was uncomfortable. And these are women in their 30s now, like full grown, you know. Uh, yeah. Shit, like it's, it's uncomfortable. But 44 years? Yeah. It's almost like, because I know that his penis is not working that great. So it's like when you get to older guys like that, that's when you start having to do extra shit, you know. True said, I mean, "Dude got a uh, a grandfather fetish. I mean, a granddaughter fetish." Wow. Yeah, he is somebody special. Can you read? Uh, not special, but I mean significant in terms of oh, finance. Oh, hey, yeah. where are you guys at on the super chat? Why aren't we super chatting? Come on, y'all. Show your love for today's content. Show your love for today's show. Please hit that super chat. The super chat is the dollar sign down at the bottom of the chat. I want to shout out my homeboy while I'm talking right now. My brother, Jawi Sola from you know where. You He's know. from Nigeria. Call me this morning. Pray with me. Love that brother. That's a very consistent brother. One thing he going to do is call and pray for you. He going he going to call out your mama name. He going to call out your grandmama name. He going to pray for you. I really appreciate that brother for being so consistent for always, you know, being so positive. Jawi Sola is our brother from Nigeria. Hey, y'all should reach out to him, man. Y'all should reach out to him. That's my brother. Love that brother to death. Love that brother to death. Jawi Sola. What up, Jawi? There's his number. If you want prayer, call the brother. Call the brother. He'll pray for you. Sarah, did you yes. find the story? Yes, I did find the story. Who Let is this guy? Over. True monger. Thank you, brother, for the five spot on the cash app. We appreciate you guys being uh, responsive. It's only 300 people in here. I don't understand. It ain't Mercury Retro. It's, it's the eclipse. You were watching no, the eclipse right now. No, it is right the now. eclipse. I'm watching it, but it should be way more motherfuckers in here right now. I'm sorry. All right, so uh, the story I pulled up here is that a 43-year-old 43, age difference didn't stop these two from having some fun in the sun. Aoki Lee Simmons, 21, was spotted kissing restaurateur Victorio Aza, 65, during a romantic vacation to St. Bart's on Tuesday. In photos obtained by Page Six exclusively, the youngest daughter of Kamora Lee Simmons and Russell Simmons Packed on the PDA with the much older Serafina co-owner while enjoying time at the beach. Okay, let me see. Scroll down here. Uh oh, they were doing a lot. They were doing a yeah, lot. Yeah, I know it's. I know okay. it's working retrograde. At one point, Aoki posed for Asaph as he took pictures of her with his phone. It's they okay. also no, took let me the stop. Let me, okay. Now okay. I'm hearing this. Okay, he took a steamy kiss. Is this some whole shit? She getting flued out. No, it's not whole shit to get flued out. 
Uh, really? What is it? Come on, what is that? Come on. No, 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 no. His race and his stature in the world speaks volumes. Would she be attracted to this man if he was a fucking librarian? Oh, that would be creepy. Okay. <laughs> Dude, but did you? <laughs> if this was a librarian, first off, if this was a librarian, there would be outrage. Because what kind of books they was reading? <laughs> <laughs> they would be like, this old pervert ass man. They would be like, what in the entire fuck is going on here? She's fucking old status. Is this some whole shit? That's, that's why I asked the question. Yeah. Let's go even, let's go another layer. If this was a black librarian that was 65 years old fucking with her, what would be the response? Hell no. Hell Do the no, 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 no. <laughs> fucking old broke niggas. They, that would literally be coming out of people's mouths. Mm -hmm. She is fucking a old broke nigga. Can you, y'all would hear that. No, but I would understand that more because I'd be like, oh, he's putting it down. <laughs> it would be understandable. Like, said, you would actually, actually think that they actually love She him. would. She's an Ivy League type like that. I, I understand all that. <laughs> he wants that fresh water. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hey, John uh, Brent, thank you. Thank you for the cash app. Please keep the cash apps and the super chats rolling. Please support the channel, Twos and Fuse. Support, support, support. Twos and Fuse, please get in here. Support, 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 support. We need to own it. And I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Ivy League. Oh, yeah. This is one of the world leaders. And that's who they date. They go get the youngsters. I get it. But there's some, it, to me, is there something pervy about it? Yeah, I don't like that oatmeal skin. That, ugh. Ooh, like he does, he does give me like he's this. He's sticky when he's lay down. Like you know what I'm saying. Like yeah, you uh. know it's got old smell. Mm -hmm. But he got a good old smell. He he's more of a Estelada smell. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, <laughs> Estelada. I'm asking y'all what y'all think. I haven't given you what I think. I'm well, just asking. What is this? Is is this something you could turn away and just be like, oh, it's cool. Peace and love and success, though. This is a failure on the mama and daddy. She's acting just like her mama. Or she's acting just like her daddy. Her daddy is the same dude the white man is. Allegedly. Isn't her dad living somewhere, like Bali somewhere? Yeah, with the crickets. Doing yoga. Somebody said, look and smell like mutton. <laughs> Well, first of all, he ain't Everybody got no real like shorts button, on. Like button, he the out there like in button, bikers the like on the beach, uh, like boxers on the beach. Well, I'm like, bro. It's crazy. He just give me that, like, he tries to feed her. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, with, like doing the airplane motion. Hey, thank you, Keith. We appreciate it. Well. She probably sits in a high chair. I'm going to let you guys go ahead. I mean, my daughter is 24. And when I call my daughter, she sound like she's nine. She still got a little kid voice. Any fathers out there who got grown daughters that still sound like children? You understand what I'm saying? At least when I talk to my son, my son, you know, his voice is deepened. You know, he sound like, you know, I, I remember this lawyer chick that I hooked my son up with called me and was like, man, your son sounds exactly like you. I couldn't tell that it wasn't you talking. But my daughter, daughter sound nine. This girl is 21 years old. I bet she still sound like a little girl. I seen her on video arguing and crying and going through all of the histrionics or whatever. And I'm like, mm. 
He just give me that he smell like garlic because they, the doctor told him it's good. Yeah, it's a lot of olive oil. Listen, oh. okay. And we're hey. done with that. Wait, baby oil versus what olive oil. Sugar, Chris, <laughs> what's our next topic? Let's keep it pushing. I'm trying to get out. Mom. Let's just talk about it right now. Dum dum did it. Let's just talk about it right now. J. Cole put out a dish. Oh, I, I put the wrong thing up. Okay. Okay. I switched it. All right. <laughs> Everybody talking about this J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar situation. And people are kind of. coming down hard on J. Cole for apologizing. Kendrick looks weird in this picture. <laughs> Number one, hip-hop is a contact sport. Wow, okay. Number one, hip-hop is a contact sport. All right? It is what it is. Cool Modi started diss battling way back in the day. Battles used to be battles between routines. Yo crew do a routine. My crew do a routine. Thank you, TMC Daddy 2. We appreciate it. That is your 10th super chat over time. Thank you. Bam, 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 Grateful bam. for your presence and teaching, my brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you for supporting. We appreciate it greatly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But let me just say this. Kumo D took what used to be battling between routines. Your crew do a routine, my crew do a routine, and then the crowd decides whose routine was the best. Modi was the first person in hip hop history to say, look at your shoes. Look at your, look look at at your, your hair, nigga. Shoes. You know, look at your <laughs> face, you know. Excuse me, Busy B, I don't mean to be bold, but put that bar, diddy bar, bullshit on hold. Like, Modi was the first person to dish your rhyme, to dish you. Modi made it personal. And that is the birth of this type of battling. This is why we say hip hop is a contact sport. Kendrick came out. And I get it. Y'all, y'all niggas clicking up. Okay. Fuck that. Fuck the big three, nigga. Don't know. The nigga is just big me. And that's hip hop. Right? That's hip hop. I understand what Kendrick is about in that regard. Kendrick is like a Kobe. Kobe is competitive. You dunk on me, I dunk on you. You sneak this in me or you mention it in me, I'm coming at your neck. Hip hop is like that when you're in when you're a real MC, hip hop is like that. Right? So I can understand why Kendrick came off and let the clip loose. He unloaded the clip. Blah, blah, blah. I get it. But I also get J. Cole. Mm-hmm. J. Cole apologized to Kendrick for his disresponse. And what I'm hearing is, he said he felt pressured to respond. His inner circle, his people, his crew. He's, and somebody sent it to me and was like, he, he was kind of channeling Zoe because he saw it as a spiritual demotion to even respond. Let me just say, and this is, this is why I mentioned the Cool Mo D piece because that's part of hip hop's DNA, is to battle. You know, LL, nigga. <laughs> LL's dissing all the old school niggas. And I'm only 18 making more than your pops, <laughs> right? I'm the new grandmaster. He's like, whoa. All the old school rappers during L's time was like, nigga, you disrespecting the brand, you disrespecting the culture. So that caused motherfuckers to respond. You feel me? But at the same time, should you respond? Do you have to respond? I even told Mo, 
you started this battle with L. I said, Mo, you could have mentored him. He was younger than you. He looked up to you. Mo was in his college dorm. They had a mutual friend that brought L to his dorm. L just wanted to meet him. L was like, oh, I know I sound like Run, but I really get my rhyme stuff from you, man. Like, And keep in mind, keep in context, Mo is young at this time. Mo's a college student. He's much older than L. Nah, I'm uh, Raheem Seven. Relax. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna address what you just said too. Right? Mo is 24. He's in college. L is a teenager when this is happening. L comes to Mo's dorm and is knocking on his door and in the hallway making beats on the wall, rhyming, because he wants to meet Cool Mo D, who's a legend at that time. You know what Mo does? Mo turns up the music on his stereo because he's in there with a girl. <laughs> so finally, L gets mad and leaves. And when Mo finally opens the door, what he hears is, old ass washed up rapper that's why you ain't gonna make no money that's where their beef started mo missed a moment where he could be the bigger person and i think kendrick is basically saying not kendrick but uh uh, uh j cole is basically saying man I got pressured into rhyming. This is the culture of hip hop. I got pressured into battling. This is the culture of hip hop. I didn't really want to battle you because if I go back and, and get critical and break down J. Cole's response, J. Cole's response is, is Jay-Z-ish. You understand? It's Jay-Z-ish. You're trying to besmirch this man's you know, catalog. You're trying to talk about. That's what Jay-Z tried to do to Nas. Uh, two of them shits was due. The, the other one was Illmatic. The rest of the shit was, you know, that's a one album every 10 year average, right? It was, it was very Jay-Z-ish. And it didn't have the same energy. It didn't have the same passion. It didn't come through like an ether. When Nas dropped ether against Jay-Z, it shut all talk up. Yeah. Motherfuckers was like, what? Typically, you have the advantage in a battle when you're in the secondary response, right? When you can respond after the initial diss. He was supposed to take him all the way out. He really didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And now I understand why he didn't do it, because he didn't want to battle. He felt pressured to battle based off of what he's saying now. And like a man, he apologized and said, yo, man, this is a spiritual demotion. I don't feel like I need to do that. I don't feel like, he was like, that's my brother. And if you feel offended, here's my chin, take one, free on me. I get that. You don't have to tap into certain areas, you know, of, of hip hop legacy if you don't want to, because I was under the impression these two were supposed to do an album together I was under the impression that these two were friends. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to respond with a diss record. You did, and it's out there. It was lukewarm, which only sets Kendrick up to come back even harder. So yeah. let me tell you how, how hip hop disses and battles go. And I go from the blueprint. If you go back and you listen to How You Like Me Now, right? That was a diss record to LL Cool J. And when I'm a kid, I'm like, this How You Like Me Now shit is whack as fuck. Why? Because the beat was ahead of its time. That was New Jack's swing before New Jack's swing was out before the 90s really popped. 
that was New Jack Swing. That beat, we didn't understand it really. Teddy Riley and them, that was some New Jack Swing shit. So the beat didn't hit the way the beats were programmed at that time. So it was like, the shit sounded like it was for older people. We didn't really understand it. We're young and we fuck with LL. The youngsters was like, LL, my nigga, we fuck with LL. Cause he was around our age group. He was a little bit older, around our age group. He's a teenager, we're fucking with L, right? Mo drops, how you like me now? Hmm. And years later, he explains to me why he dropped that as a diss record. He was baiting L to respond. How you like me now? I'm bigger and deafer, forget about better, you know, whatever. I'm bigger and better. Forget about Defa. You know, he was doing that shit. Come to my show, jock me, then try to rock me. You know, you understand? He did that to bait LL. Mm -hmm. LL responds with Jack the Ripper, the B side on the Less Than Zero soundtrack. Right? It's the B-side to going back to Cali. Jack the Ripper, King Hercules, you know. I heard your new jam, I don't play that. You know, L came right at his ass, right? A washed up rapper needs a wash up. My name is Jack the Ripper. Mo baited him to do that. Mo knew that fucking How You Like Me Now was a pop record. And Mo knew that LL thought that that was soft and that he could crush it. And Mo knew that LL was gonna come hard and empty the clip on whatever he came out with. He came out with Jack the Ripper. And, and to this day, we still love the Jack the Ripper record. But when we go back and we dissect the lyrics, it was meh, it was mid. So, Mo gets him to respond because Mo wants to release a diss record that he actually wants to release. Not How You Like Me Now, it's Let's Go. And when you go back and you listen to Let's Go, that's when Mo takes all the L's. Let's Go was bonkers. And LL stands for lower, level, lousy, lethargic. You know, he just, he just put all the L's to diss L. That was the record he wanted. Take off your shirt, flex and flirt, and leave the real hard rhymes to the hard rhyme expert. Like, nigga, you gonna have to resort to coming on stage butt naked to make up for what you can't do on records. That's when Mo was, did you gotta remember, Mo is 20 something, he's in his 20s, L is a teenager. Mo is ripping the kid to pieces. But Mo set him up with the How You Like Me Now record. Knowing that the kid is going to think that shit is soft. What is all of this saying about the it, J. Cole seen a bigger picture? J. Cole had an epiphany. Man, I don't want to battle the homie. Mm -hmm. Just like Mo missed an opportunity to mentor L, in my opinion. When Mo tells me this story, Mo, he missed an opportunity. This kid is coming, looking up to him. When we look at the three... Uh, Mo has this idea where there's a, there's a trinity in each era of hip hop. In his era, the trinity of MCs is Melly Mel, Grandmaster Cass, and Mo D. And he's saying that is the first trinity. And from that trinity come all other trinities. So Melly Mel is bombastic storytelling well, that's where you get your biggies. That's where you get your Chuck D's. That's where you get your KRS-1s, Melly Mel, his style. Grandmaster Cass, slick, funny, jokes, clever, witty. Oh, that's your Big Daddy Kane's, right? That's your, that's your, your Jay-Z's. They come out of that lineage of Cass. Grandmaster Cass, probably one of the most fam famous MCs you've never heard of. 
because his manager stole his legacy by stealing his rhyme book and joining the Sugar Hill Gang. Go figure. Mm. Then you have the third MC from that trinity, Cool Mo D, the creator of fast rhyming and vocabulary. He was the first one to rap hella fast, and he was the first one to infuse deep lyrics, deep vocabulary. From him, you get your Rakims, your Nas's, your LL's, your Tila Rocks. They all come from the Mo lineage. And then the next trinity, of course, and how Mo breaks it down, with each trinity, you get a superstar. So their trinity, right? Melly Mel, Kaz, Mo D, their trinity was Curtis Blow. The next trinity, right? What's your next trinity? Y'all ready? Well, Curtis, Bl I would say the, the trinity with their superstar was Curtis Blow and Run DMC. The next trinity is KRS, Rakim, Big Daddy Kane. Who was their star? LL Cool J. See? And Mo has all of these trinities lined up like that. I'm just saying, J. Cole did the big thing by stepping up and apologizing for, for re responding. And I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's problematic for him to do that. Could this apology lead to a collaboration? I would hope so. Because they were supposed to give us a collaboration anyway. And why does apologizing to your brother for misspeaking, why does that seem like we want to demonize him as soft or, or weak or some shit? Why do we want to do that? Why don't we applaud and celebrate this brother for, for stepping up and saying, man, that, that wasn't really on my heart to do no shit like that. I apologize. And I, I'm with J. Cole for doing that. That's my thought. Sarah, yours? Um, my whole thing about everything is just like it's, it's in a world where uh, you always have people beefing, especially in entertainment, uh, which I think is crazy for millionaires to decide that they want to talk shit about each other. But anyway, uh, it, 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 everybody's about media press, who's trending and all this kind of stuff. I think it was very big of him to um uh, to apologize i also think that this taught him a very big lesson that the pressures that you're already under in the minute in, in the in the media and in the music industry uh he should take account of the people that really pushed him those that were pushing him for this this um retaliate retaliatory uh type of uh rap that he this record he did Versus the people that really was like, no, and addressed him like as a man, like, dude, this not you. So let me just say this to the folks in the chat talking shit. And you guys have every right to talk shit. I ain't tripping. I am DJ Cool Rod. J. Cole Soft. This is hip hop. Uh, Renzo says, uh, no, 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 not Renzo. Uh, Shun Wan Shitong says, I agree. This is a sport. Compete. No, it's Let me just say this real quick. <gasps> I think a lot of you motherfuckers just like drama like bitches. No disrespect. I'm not calling you bitches. I'm saying like bitches. I think a lot of y'all like drama. Y'all like this. This brings excitement. And I think we marginalize moments that represent a, a sort of up leveling, spiritual up leveling. Like, yeah, I get hip hop is a sport, but this is your homeboy. Jay and Kendrick are homeboys. Can, can we remember that? Jay and Kendrick are homeboys. They were supposed to collab together. So I get what you're saying. I, I, I understand the sport of it. I get it. But these are guys that were supposed to deliver an album for us where they collab together. Right? I'm not, you know what I'm saying? But I think sometimes because we live in, what I'm saying is I'm not attacking the brothers that are making their point. What I'm saying is we leave out the toxicity of YouTube and social media. YouTube and social media gassing it too, right? All you got to do is go on and, and, pull, and type in Kendrick this, Kendrick J. Cole this, or Kendrick whatever. Do you know how many reaction videos is out there? Hey, hey, let's get it, bro. Niggas is lip syncing and... 
Because drama is what's pushing the whole shit. So J. Cole brings up something that is very poignant. Man, I felt I had to speak on it. Like, I had to respond. He felt pressure to do it. I hear y'all. But, but these are more conscious rappers. You know what I'm saying? Like, leave that to the people that, that that's what they're they're, Modi they're was chicken. a conscious rapper. Exactly. I, I'm not saying that what he did was very tasteful as well, but it was a different climate back then. And I think it also was indicative of the time in which he was switching over from the more conscious rap to to what it is like, you know, what it started developing into. I don't, I don't, I mean, for 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 Christ's sake, I mean you even had uh, Anita Baker and Babyface ba uh, beefing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just really getting out of control. Like, it doesn't, like, I, it's not needed. It's like, but if you want to do things for Cloud and stuff like that, if that's what you want to do, then by all means do it. But it's just. Jeffrey Hicks, thanks. It's not cool. It's just not, I don't I think, I think it's not necessary. Sal319 says he went out soft, bro. It ain't that deep. What? Y'all think like simple shit is, do, you, you, you do know simple shit is deep. Yeah. You don't get your coloring inside the lines thinking ass out of here. I don't fuck with slow minded niggas. It ain't that deep. Not for you. But there, <laughs> there are subtlety and nuance. The subtlety and nuance to this conversation is those dudes are friends. Why should mm. they battle? <laughs> uh. Those dudes are conscious rappers that bring a certain level of thought to their music that elevates and uplifts the community. Why should they be at odds? You just want to be entertained. Yeah, and it's like, I, know, apolog I guess apologies don't go over as well as diss records. Uh, Mike, Michael says, uh, 50 Cent ruined Ja Rule. Took him off the game, off his game, and he. You never heard any more Ashanti duos. Like, Again, Fifty is one of my favorites, uh, one of my favorite MCs. Period. But again, when we look at Fifty in diss mode, Fifty in diss mode is like Tupac and Biggie in diss mode, I and I don't level. like. <laughs> And I don't like their diss mode because their diss mode evokes death. It's reckless, yeah. You're, ble you're bleeding lovely with your spirit above me or beneath me. Your whole life you live sneaky. Now you, die now you rest eternally sleepy. You burn when you creep. Me nigga, he talked about two. <laughs> Shit. It's just. That's why I fucked your bitch. Boo, do, 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 boo, boo. It's too much. It's fucking too much. You see, 50 is in that lane. That lane of when, when you're dissing, you're evoking something. It's not art anymore. Can't. Yeah, they should, they should battle. You remember Tupac and Biggie's battle? Both day rhymes spoke death. Mm -hmm. What happened? Music is spells, right? Words are spells, right? Music has frequency and vibration, right? Well, see, I, I agree with um, with Dudley. Dudley said 50 and Ja Rule was not about hip hop, though. Like they was, but they used hip hop to do it through the vehicle of hip hop. Gotcha, gotcha. You're right. Mm-hmm. It is crazy to me. <laughs> it's, it's so so petty. It's so petty. Again, it ain't about being soft. To me, apologizing is some manhood shit. Do you know narcissists can't apologize? Narcissists don't know how to apologize. Narcissists don't empathize. Not at all. Could, could it be argued that society is turning their men into narcissists and their women into narcissists by stripping care and empathy away? Man, fuck that. This is a goddamn 
contact sport. None of you niggas know how to play it. Oh, spin that shit. It be niggas that are like Skip Bayless talking about they, they, they nigga, this is a battle. They just do you rhyme? Have you ever wrote a rhyme? Have you ever wrote a record? But that's when you give leeway to a person to commentate off of sports that never played. Yeah. So they think that it that 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 can spill over to anything. Man, let these two brothers, you know what I'm saying? Let these two brothers find peace. And I hope I hope they come together and do that collab that everybody been waiting for. Uh like I said, big ups uh to um J. Cole for being a man and apologizing and retracting his diss. No disrespect. Thank you, uh Rahim. I'm young, but was KRS-One's bridges over competitive or real smoke? For me, KRS-One, again, he was the nigga on the album cover holding the pistol, something far from a, a lover beside my brother, S-C-O-T-T. I just laugh because no one can defeat. Listen, KRS-One, that, that bridge is over had smoke. <laughs> this nigga dissed everybody in the Juice Crew. <laughs> and Roxanne Shante is only good for steady fucking. Like, hey, not Roxanne. He, was, he, he dissed everybody. Oh, Roxy. He put the whole bridge on blast. The bridge is over. The bridge is over. Hey, hey, the bridge is over. The bridge is over. Come on, man. He put everybody on blast. You like y'all niggas don't want it. <laughs> like he really, like some sometimes dissing goes too far. And as you get dissing moving into different generations, street shit, gunplay, all types of shit gets integrated. But see, that's that that was so disturbing to me because I I don't gangsters now whatever to me i think they're some of the most emotional niggas ever like it's just like you so you about to kill somebody you about to shoot somebody over something that they said my nigga like damn that is crazy like but, but think about what krs <laughs> one said to your point he was like yo we got to stop dissing because now dissing motherfuckers you offend fans of the motherfucker you dissed mm-hmm and a random goofy stand nigga might take it. Do you see what I mean by when I said earlier in the show, you got an empty ass fucking life and you're being entertained and all that. Do you see what I was saying about that? A fan might take, he think it's his responsibility to respond for Kendrick. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like this shit goofy. <laughs> this shit has turned goofy. It is not skill based anymore as a matter of fact let me let me give you guys this this is cool mo d's favorite ll record and mo explained he said man if 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 l would have responded to my let's go record with this record he would have won the battle and the record mm -hmm. is called nitro it's from the walking with a panther album but LL exhibits the same flow on that song that Rakim exhibited on Follow the Leader. And L is rhyming like a motherfucker. It's skill. You, we're, we're battling skill. We're not trying to kill. And oftentimes when you imbue that, you bitch nigga and ho ass nigga, I'll pull the strap out and you know, you understand that kind of talk in rhymes? I'm telling you, man, it's casting spells. It has energy associated with it. And, I, and I, that's why I said I think uh, Kendrick did, uh, not Kendrick, but J. Cole did a great job in trying to de-escalate the situation. And I hope Kendrick hears him and grants clemency in that way. Thank you guys for supporting. Where are we on the uh, super chat, Sarah? Right now, we're at $79.58. Back to you, Zoe. We appreciate everybody for showing their love and showing up and showing out. We have an incredible show tonight on KBLA Talk 1580. Uh, it's going to be amazing, guys. Um, 
I have a great topic set up. I'm still cultivating it. But uh, tonight, KBLA, download the KBLA Talk 1580 app. Show your love, show your support. Please continue to hit the Super Chat or Cash App. If you want to send the bread directly to me, uh, I'd appreciate it. Just uh, hit my Cash App. Let me uh, shout out everybody that has sent a Cash App. MJ Hester, Roger Raglan, L.S. Jefferson, KTB, Lloyd Hinton, uh, Rusan, I don't know how to say your first name. K. Rusan, Kai Rusan, Dana mm-hmm. Dorsey, Jeffrey Brown, John Brent, Keith, and Jeffrey Hicks. We appreciate uh, the support. If you want to support, all you have to do, moderators assemble. Please post my cash app. Moderators assemble. Do, do, do. <laughs> Please post, my cash app. <laughs> Please post my cash app and support, support, support. We'd appreciate it. Uh, 366 people in here. Everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the share button. Uh, again, shout out to Kendrick. Did we cover every every topic? Um, We covered, let's see, we have one. I think it's one more. Oh. Right, it's Diddy. Diddy. It's Diddy. Before we play the Diddy, can you play that uh the Farrakhan video? Yes, the Farrakhan video. I want you guys to see this because this has been trending as well. All right. You see men fall. Don't laugh. Learn. Learn. Because you're on your way up. And the things that tempt people to fall, you and I are not free from that temptation nor from the weakness that will cause us to stumble and fall. When you laugh at somebody else's fall, white or black, rich or poor, your enemy or your friend, you are laughing and opening a way for your own demise when you do that. Because to laugh and not learn, to make mockery and not to understand, is to make the same mistake yourself. Did you hear me? Did you hear? So a lot of people are posting this video and they are doing the split screen with with Diddy. Uh, And I guess they're saying this is a reference to the, you know, black Americans. Like black Americans are abandoning Diddy. Let me just say um, two things. Two things can be true at once. Black Americans don't have to support other black Americans that we feel have done something wrong. That's number one. Number two, (laughs) black Americans also understand the struggles of being seen as guilty before you've been proven innocent. That isn't to say that Diddy is innocent. Right? That isn't to say I think Diddy is innocent. Right? What it is to say is be quiet. Stand back and observe. Not only observe what Diddy is accused of doing and and accused of being like a monster, right? But also see how the system treats a black monster. Because there's racism in how the, tr- the system treats black and white monsters. We saw a white monster go into a South Carolina church and mm. shoot up nine parishioners and get taken to fucking Burger King for come, lunch. Come on. Okay, with cheese. Right? But we saw Diddy's sons be handcuffed. We saw America use too much force to go into his properties Right. And you got legal. You got counsel all over the world. Law lawyers, black lawyers all over the world saying, yeah, he might be guilty of something. We don't know yet. We you know, he may have done something. But the way you guys are handling him right now before he has been proven guilty. Too much force. Gross negligence, too much force. You think you could treat him like he ain't shit. Right. And, and, and he might not be shit. 
I don't know. Reserve your judgment. I think that's what the minister is saying. Reserve your condemnation. You may feel personally that, yes, this motherfucker deserved whatever he get. Cassie testifying, uh, uh, allegedly testifying on the Fed side. Oh, it be black people that be pushing everything. We are the culture creators. You go online right now, Jaguar Wright was right. You go online right now, Jay-Z next. I hear Beyonce even worse than Jay-Z. We're the ones pushing it, right? Sometimes we gotta sit the fuck back and observe how our monsters are getting treated, right? Because they treat our monsters fucked up even worse than they treat their monsters, and I think that's unfair. Justice should be uniform for everybody, right? And the punishment should be uniform for everybody. It's not always the case. But you look, compare Diddy to Donald Trump. Donald Trump is getting his ass kicked, but he can still win the fucking presidents. He, do you know Donald Trump can fuck around and be a, a goddamn president one more time? Yeah. And then, what do you think he's gonna do when he become president again? It's gonna he be worse. Gonna, he gonna go in there and make every law to protect the executive office. Watch. Absolutely. He gonna make it so the executive office is unassailable. Watch. Let's see, Brother Darkness, I respectfully disagree, though, about J. Cole apologizing. The best show of manhood is to respond. J. Cole, compete. Keep it lyrical, and at the end, the public chooses the winner. They shake hands afterwards. It's done. I'm just saying. Brother Darkness, I don't disagree with that. But I'm also saying there's more than one way to, to, to skin a cat. I'm also saying he could go another way and it'd be okay. So what you're saying isn't an untruth. You know, this reminds me of the final episode of The Avatar mm. with Aang. Aang is an airbender. Airbenders don't kill. So what does Aang do? Aang channels all of his previous lives. Avatar Roku, Avatar Kiyoshi. You know, he's, he's, he's saying, man, and they're all telling him, you got to kill this motherfucker. That's what the fuck the Avatar does. He kills evil. He has to do it for the sake of humanity. It's bigger than you, Aang. Fuck all this pacifist shit you own. That's what my brother is talking about here. Fuck all this pacifist shit. So Aang is really conflicted because he's a monk. He's a Buddhist. He's nonviolent. They're saying, fuck all that. You got to go out there. You got to rip, kill, destroy. And it wasn't until he met a lion turtle where the lion turtle said, well, before the benders, you know, being able to bend the elements, and all this shit is from Africa, really. I ain't even, I, I, I'm not even going. Before the benders, one had the power to bend another's soul. But the only way to bend somebody else's soul, you gotta have such a pure consciousness to where their soul doesn't corrupt your soul. And so Aang came up with a new way to bend Fire Lord Ozai's soul. He basically took away his bending, his ability to bend fire. No one had ever done that before Aang. So I hear what you're saying. There's, a, there's always another way to do something. That's why I said this reminds me of the last episode of the Avatar, right? We always think the only way to respond is the way we know how to respond, and that is battle, nigga, let's battle, let's finish it. And yes, that is one way to do it. But Cole chose another way, and he shouldn't be demonized as weak or a bitch-ass motherfucker because he chose another way. That's just my thought. But back to Diddy. Mm. Go ahead, Sarah. I, my, I, I my, know you disagree. It's all right. We get well, to disagree here. 
Well, my thing is with him, uh, first of all, like I, I understand like monsters be treated a different way and all that kind of stuff. But it is very, 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 very been a part of a lot of villains in black culture. Is that like white folks, white folks teach you bad, but when you find a nigga that has a bunch of power and they get to you, there's no white man on this earth oh. gonna treat you worse than a nigga that think they have the power over you. And I'm telling you, baby, even like, like, go back to even slavery time, a lot of black slave owners was even worse to the slaves than the, than, than the, um, than the white ones was. Not negating the fact that the white, per, uh, the white people were, were, were bad. My, 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 I'm just saying this. When you decide that you have that have withheld grace from your own people, don't rely on the grace of other people. No, for real. You know what I'm That's saying? That's why I say we just got to sit back. Let's just sit back, man. Let's just let's just sit back. That's Jesse Smollett this. Listen, because I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Y'all been hearing about this shit for a long time. Puffy Thank is you. your uncle. Tee. If all this shit is real about Puff, Puffy, your uncle, we treat Puffy the way we treat our, 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 our malignant uncles or aunties that done done some dust, some dirty shit in the family. They still be at motherfucking uh, Brother Darkness. Okay, we can agree to disagree. Absolutely, bro. That's what I mean. That's, this is exactly what brothers do. That's what I mean. We can agree to disagree. But Puffy is our uncle. And a lot of times we turn a blind eye to fuck shit that be going on. We turned a blind mm -hmm. eye to R. Kelly for many years. Oh, yeah. Over there peeing and shit. It's sad. Don't try to be like, yeah, fuck him. You knew what he was doing back then. And if the nigga offered you a gig, you would have took it. Thank you. You got to tell Diddy no. That's you got to tell Diddy no. That's what I'm saying. You got to <laughs> fall back and observe. Because even though he may or may not, I'm just, for the sake of American justice, either he may or may not be guilty. Say that quote. The bottom line is we still gotta make sure they treat him properly. You guilty, you, you go to prison, you, you do whatever you gotta do, whatever, right? But don't do no extraordinary shit that you wouldn't do to no white folk. Your white monsters, you got to treat black monsters the same way you treat white monsters. But when the black monster decides that he wants to be protected or uh, hang with the white monsters and stuff like that, don't be surprised. Because at the end of the day, OJ, you still a nigga. I'm going to tell you right yeah. now. <laughs> if, if, if Diddy is the monster we all think he is, where do you think he learned it from? That's what I'm talking about, from the best, honey. The white people in this business, the music industry? Hmm, billionaire well, I'm 23 bussy. years old, man. I, I'm working for fucking Madonna. Freddie DeMann is in there. With our old face. Freddie, De look his <laughs> name up. Freddie D-Man. D-E-M-A-N-N. -N. That's his name. Freddie D-Man. Freddie managed Tavares. Tavares! Hey! Hey, Tavares! <laughs> Freddie managed Tavares. He managed Lionel Richie. He managed Michael Jackson. He managed Madonna. He managed uh, oh, okay. Macy Gray. He, th this is one of the biggest music industry managers oh, yeah, in the game. Freddie DeMann owned Maverick Records. They had to buy him out later. Oh, yeah, off the wall and thriller. Damn. Come on, man. Like, Freddie DeMann is huge. That's the one who hired me, Freddie the Man. Wasn't listening to nobody. Gemini like me, he was like, Madonna was like, yeah, you, you hired a fucking black music and r we, we, This is a rock company. He's like, this is my label. I like black music. I, I've been a part of it. So I want black music here. He didn't ask Madonna. That motherfucker hired me on his own. Didn't tell nobody. Again. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? I don't know. You talking about Freddie the Man? 
But I was making a point about white monsters being treated differently than black monsters. And the music industry. It's the music industry. Yes. I was talking about the music industry. He learned from some monsters. Yes. I'm fucking 23 years old. I come into the office. I got a backpack on. I got my hat on back, backwards or whatever. I'm dressed like I'm getting ready to go to the gym and hoop. I go in my backpack, pull out a tape. At the time, I had the Jazzy Fat Nasties. I go, yo, this is the hip hop version of In Vogue. Peep this out. He put it on. He was like, that shit gets my dick hard. Yeah, you went in there with some sweatpants. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm okay. Just, nigga. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I had never heard a response <laughs> like that. Hey. He was like, that shit gets my dick hard. This 23 year old Zoe, Zoe, Zoe want to fight. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? They, these motherfuckers talk like this? Do you understand? It's a weird environment around these motherfuckers. Everything is like, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is we saying? My, like, that shit gets my dick hard. No, like it was cool to say. Like, I'm. Wow. He was like, that shit gets my dick hard. That's what I'm talking about. Are they available? Damn. (laughs) Oh, my God. And then right after that, he was like, so... Ninety? Is ninety cool? It not nah, what? Ninety K a year. Hmm. I got hired in twenty minutes. With them gym clothes on, babe. Hey, you worked it out. He was like, so is is <laughs> is ninety cool? Nigga, I'm 23. Hell yeah, 90 is cool. Nigga, do you know I walked over here from from Loud Records around the corner? <laughs> yes, 90 is great. <laughs> Back then? I'm trying to see how I was going to get home. Thank you, nigga. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 I'm out here with a K-set tape. <laughs> with a K-set. Mm-hmm. Shit. I was at Quincy's house. He was talking crazy, too. This is when he was like 70 something, 72, what? 70, 73. What is he like a thousand now or something? He was like, listen here, man. He said, I see those eyes. I see them. Oh. He said, you're in trouble, aren't you? Modi was standing right there. You're in trouble. Motherfucker. I can tell, motherfucker. You're in trouble. Shit. You got kids, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, I know. I know, motherfucker. Look at you. You're gorgeous, you know? Shit. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Then he says, I'm too fucking old to play, you know. Mm. Fuck that, you know. And he, then he goes, I lick my fingers and say, hey, is it on? What are we doing? Is it on? He's like, is it on? What's, what's happening? What's, what's going on? I said, what the fuck? A lot of little he yes, was talking Susan. about, he said he was talking to an old white lady. And he said she was at his, at his crib and he licked his finger and was like, hey, what's happening? Is it on? I said, God damn it. He said, shit, I'm too old. I did I, I shit. I'm alive, man. Shit. I gotta live. Said, All right, kid. Cute world? wild and a motherfucker, man. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> so all I'm saying is the industry is full of monsters. <laughs> Weird ass monsters. Well, Weird ass monsters. When I met fucking Madonna, oh, you have big hands. Wow. I said, you mean like Dennis Rodman's hands? That, see, I was an asshole back then because, I, first off, I'm pro-black. I got all, you know, pro-black literature and shit on my desk. Smelling like Je- Jehovah. Yeah, you Jehovah know, to Jehovah. eat, to live. I got, she, she was like, hey, you know, you got, you got really big hands. I said, Ooh. like Dennis Rodman? <laughs> the better to punch your ass in the face. Because I'm an asshole. I'm letting her know, like, bitch, I'm not finna fuck with you. And it came back to haunt me because eventually Freddie DeMann was like, what did you do to Madonna? She says you're an asshole. Mm. 
because she asked me three or four times to go shopping with her. I was like, mm-mm, no, no. No more shopping, no, spree, no. spree. No, no, no. So, yeah, this, this industry contributed. I'd say it gave him a piece, but I would also say he came with a piece if he got that darkness in him. He yeah. probably came with his own piece, too. Just but this industry okay. will put you on some old weirdo shit, some old late night, what the fuck are we doing here type shit. Mm. Hey! How did we <laughs> get here? How <laughs> did we get here? No did he supposed to be here. Right. <laughs> it's, it's some whole other yes. shit popping. Oh, man. I was like... Listen, I'm glad I was pro black than a motherfucker back then. I'm literally pro, like nigga. Mm-hmm. Coco Butter saved my life. And Saru Allah. <laughs> nigga, Nation of Islam, all of it. Ivan Van Sertima, all of it. Yeah, Dr. Oh. <laughs> I, hey, fuck that. That's crazy. And my work. mother was alive. I remember one time. <laughs> what does that happen? I'm just telling stories now. <laughs> I remember one time, I only dated a white girl one time. I was 18. And I was, this is before I was an executive. I was still rapping and shit. Story time was always. You know, I created story time, and then motherfuckers started stealing it. Oh. Mo- uh, motherfuckers all over the internet started saying story time with whoop de whoop I started <laughs> that at, at Dash Radio. Anyway. Man... I remember one Thanksgiving, I brought this white girl around my sisters and my mother. Oh, Lord. And when I say I brought her around, she was just dropping me off. I was still in high school. She was just dropping me off to my sister's crib where the Thanksgiving get down was. The motherfuckers looked out that door. My <laughs> my sister, I got two sisters. And my mother, my mother is this type. She just had the whole. <laughs> my mother had the, the twisted face, like. Like they was there. My sisters was on some old. And the reason why my sisters was on some nosy type who is who dropping him off type shit is because I ain't gonna lie, at the time I had a, a, a sister that they loved. They I was dating a sister that they loved. They saw that white girl drop me off, they was like, my boozy. <laughs> But it hurt me when I got inside the house and my mom was like, you know who we are, don't you? Oh, I said, oh, 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 shit. Come on, mother. <laughs> Come on, mother. Rose is different. Rose is like, you know who we are, right? I said, yeah. what you mean? You know where your people <laughs> You know where we come from. <laughs> I said, all right, Rose. You ain't, okay. All right. She was like, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> that look on my mama's face changed it all. I said, okay, let me stop fucking around. <laughs> that, you know who we are, don't you? I said, oh, shit. <laughs> said, mama, <laughs> I'm sorry. Mama, mama I'm sorry. <laughs> mama. Mama. <laughs> Wait, why know she ain't coming up in here? Oh, man. Yeah, man, I learned my lesson. That sister is still one of my friends to this day. One of my closest friends. What, the white girl? No. The sister that I had, that I was dating back then. She's still one of my tightest friends. You know, when my children were born, she brought them gifts and all types of shit. That sister is still solid than a motherfucker. But that's all I needed. I just needed to see that one look on Rose's face hmm. and her response. You know who we are, don't you? Mm-hmm. I said, okay, Rose, shit. 
damn. You light skinned, baby, but we we been in the fields. So you the, <laughs> leave her home. No, we got some light skins. We got some white folk. We got we got a few people oh, mixed in. <laughs> Big Mama story. <laughs> Big Mama, you know. Big Mama had a biracial nigga. <laughs> baby. Big Mama say we outside. Big Mama had a, a, a elder barge type nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Big Mama liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Big yeah. Mama is the one who kind of put the 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 biracial wrinkle on shit. <laughs> Big mom, what you doing with your little four foot eleven ass out here dating some biracial white kind of light bright passing dude? Hmm, I'm trying to give you a future, son. <laughs> we trying to set us up for the long haul. <laughs> what you doing, Big Mama? This 1912. Stop. <laughs> if you want to pass, you can pass. I got you. We trying to get somewhere, boy. Sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I love that shit, man. Um, yeah, those are the days. But man, w- women have taught me everything I know about relationships. Because I done fucked up so many times, and they're going to tell me when I fuck up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's it. That's it. We about to get up out of here. Yeah. I appreciate everybody for tapping in. Can everybody hit the like button on their way out? Yes. And if you can, can everybody? It's 400 people in here. We should have did 400 on the Cash App. Everybody sent a dollar to the Cash App. That would have blew us up. Can I get 50 people to send $2 to the Cash App? 50 people should be able to do it. Uh, moderators assemble, please put my Cash App in there. The biracial wrinkle. <laughs> Brother Dyway. I'm not standing up for P. Shitty, <laughs> but we have to reserve judgment on P. Shitty because, number one, none of the Vicks have filed a police report, only civil suits for monetary gain. Number two, Am I to believe the FBI who killed Mark Martin and Malcolm? Listen, the bottom line is, I don't know what the fuck these motherfuckers be doing. But I tell you what, I know whenever black men and women do shit, it gets blown out of proportion. I'm not saying Diddy isn't guilty. I don't know. If motherfuckers is coming out saying whatever, I get it. Bill Cosby, and motherfuckers heard about Bill Cosby for years. Yeah, he's been an asshole. But did he do it? Didn't he do it? Were they doing the shit he was doing back in his day? I, nigga, I don't know. Uh, listen, the, hey, thank you, uh, Sidney Barry Sr. Thank you. He's the first to, to hit us on the cash app with that dollar challenge. Can everybody do it? Listen, I don't know, but what I do know is we should reserve judgment. We should stay the fuck out of it and just watch. We'll know what we need to know. We'll see what we need to see. But let's just watch. Because this is a whole shit show right now. And I'm inclined to agree with the young brother, 19 Keys, this is a distraction. Mm-hmm. Hey, oh, y'all drop, Terry. You're dropping it off. Drop they, doing it, they doing it. We, 48, we need 48 more people to do it. William Terry... And uh, Jeffrey, uh, no, William Terry and who else? Somebody else did it. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, Sidney Berry. Let's get it running. If we can get 48 more people to do it, we're asking you to send $2. Can you do it right now? Can you do it right now? Let's go, let's go, let's go. We appreciate everybody who super chatted. We appreciate everybody who showed their love. But we got to get out of here. Y'all can hear my cash app suit on, you know what I'm saying? Hey, can y'all hit up Sarah? Really? Please? <laughs> can y'all hit up Sarah? Please? And do you guys want me to continue posting the mansion shows? No, they don't. Y'all let me know. Because Sarah, didn't I send you a whole slew? Yes, they will all They will all be. You'll see the lineup this week, though. That'll be a view for upcoming shows. Hey, Carlton, thank you for the $2. We need 47 more people to do it. Somebody said do an extra 30 minutes. If I do an extra 30 minutes, will you guys do it? It won't be 30 minutes because I do have to go. It won't be. But if I extend today's show, will y'all go to my cash app right now and and drop that $2? I'll I'll stay if, you know. Uh oh. Oh, they Uh-oh. Hit it. here we go. Let's get it rolling. Joseph Harris, Zaid Abubakari. Abubakari. I missed 
I don't think I missed a couple. Oh, we people. got uh, Timo and Moosey B. Let's shout everybody oh, out. Let's Moosey shout them out if they're getting it in. Let's do get it. In, get in, get in, if y'all going to do it, Joseph Harris, Elliot, William Terry, Carlton A. Let's keep it rolling. So, yeah, I'll keep talking. If you guys keep supporting, please hit the like button. Share, share, share. Please show your support. Show your support. There you hey, go. Danny Tapy, uh, Tapler. Mike Trenton, $10. We'll take it, Mike Trenton. We appreciate it. Amir hey. McMillan. We'll take it. Hey. Tracy Wingfield. We'll take it. I'm shouting everybody out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's shout. Let's shout. Thanks, Elliot. Shout. Let, Let it all out. out. This is the support I've been talking about. Come on. I'm talking to you. Snow Canes. Zeta. Yeah. Let's get it rocking. So, the eclipse, man, things are changing. We got a new situation coming in. A paradigm shift. There's so many different things, man. What? There's so many different things surrounding it. <laughs> it is. Did you know that thing hit Zeta. all of the cities of Nineveh? Can you read that story I sent you, Sarah? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Hey, Asia Dumas, the biblical city of Nineveh. I know it goes is. through seven. The, the, listen, it went through seven cities mm-hmm. called Nineveh. I know, I, I didn't hey. Where did you send it to? George Riley. It's in the list. George mm-hmm. Riley, Alonzo Davis. It's on, I'm Ade Aluwu. Sarah? I'm, I'm looking at the thing. That you, look at the thing that you sent me. I don't think you sent that to me. Say. 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 Uh, uh, what the fuck is this shit called? What is it called? The name of it is just the Eclipse. E- yeah, Eclipse City of Nineveh Transit. Yeah, City of Nineveh. Damian Wiley, thank you. That's your first cash app. We appreciate all the cash appers. We appreciate everybody for showing their love. Again, let's get it rolling. If y'all, hey, I'll stay a little longer if you guys hit that cash oh, app. We're going to do a bonus story real quick. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, whoa, what is this? Okay, so this, it says two places named Nineveh, not seven. In I the don't bank. have a other cash app, Rex G. That might be somebody, you probably sent somebody else some money. I, I only have one cash app. Nineveh, okay, so it's Nineveh, Indiana? Yes, it's passing through all those cities. There's a story. You should be able to read the story. Okay, I'm, I'm trying. Oh, this is USA Today. Okay, so this is... Uh, About the transit okay. through Nineveh, the seven cities? Uh, a Martian invasion. Okay, not only does the solar tip go through the city, then this is... I want to make sure this is the right thing, Okay. Okay, this one talks about the, uh, this attempt to link the eclipse to biblical locations whiffs on the dif- details. There are two Ninevehs, not seven, mm-hmm. inside the April 8th um, eclipse path of totality that is shown in the post. There we go. Uh, the other want. five Ninevehs will just see a partial eclipse, like nearly all of the continental U.S. The eclipse paths do cross in Little Egypt. But uh, that's a little large, uh, that's a large region, not a town. Two Ninevehs, okay. So the, the eclipse first, passed through Little Egypt irregardless. Irregardless. Okay, now. Okay. But do you want me, okay, you want to, okay, where is this? Okay. So the eclipse2024.org website lists uh, municipalities that will experience a total solar eclipse and include seven places across, but only two fall in the path of totality, Nineveh, Indiana, and Nineveh, Ohio. Okay. So they're saying, 
Why is this? I, this is trying to dispel like the, the smell of the That's the scientific perspective. Remember what the scientific perspective is about. Hey, Hez Aleo, thank you for the cash app. Let me just say this, because we just saw uh, Tyson, Neil deGrasse, uh -huh. speaking from the perspective of a cosmologist and basically saying the planets have no influence on anybody on planet Earth. You have to remember, <coughs> the European is, he bases all of his science off of the scientific model. And because of the 17th century, you have Descartes, who basically separated spiritual, spirituality and science. Previous to that, spirituality and science went hand in hand, which, which many people call alchemy. All right? So when you look at modern day scientists, they come from the scientific method, right? So, and the scientific method pervades Western education as well. So it's, it's funny that all of our sciences come from mystical arts. So alchemy gives birth to chemistry, right? Astrology gives birth to astronomy, which is cosmology as well, right? It's mm -hmm. really funny, right, that uh, what, they, you know, what they discredit is actually the thing that gave birth to the science. Like philosophy gave birth to psychology, but many psychologists try to downplay philosophy. They try to marginalize it. Like, well, we don't want to over philosophize. Like, nigga, this is the birth. This your mama. You came out of the womb of philosophy. Astronomy comes out of the womb of astrology, right? And people don't understand. Hey, thank you, Claude Ellison. We appreciate it. Let's keep going. Brother Darkness for six piece wing dinner. Thank you, sir. Hey. <laughs> Wait, is that a LA six piece wing yeah, dinner? Or LA, is it a <laughs> that might be two and a half pieces. Okay. <laughs> That's the one piece a la carte. No, but I'm just saying, we mm -hmm. live in this kind of society that tries to minimize spirituality. And hey, hey. thank you, brother. At 25 years old, uh, during COVID, you helped me change my life. I got all the books you said to buy and introduced me to new oh, knowledge. Dope. Thanks, bro. Much love from Philly. Hey, man, if I can help people change, then it all matters, man. It means something. Thank you, Rusan. If I, I don't want to pronounce your name yeah. incorrectly, but I appreciate everybody for hitting that cash app. Don't be afraid to support your channel, your brother, Zoe Williams. I'm here. I'm getting ready to get up out of here in another five minutes. Uh, so if you haven't done it yet, do it now. But that transit through Nineveh, a lot of people been talking about it. I got video clips and people are talking about how there's going to be this portal and this great shift. Let me tell you something. Shifting happens whenever you go inside. Mm. Whenever you reconcile inner wounds, you enact your own shift. You don't need a portal. A lot of times people will talk about these special dates and times, and I'm not saying that they're not special. But what I'm saying is you don't need a particular date and time or location in order to have a shift. Come on. All you have to do is go inside. Everything you've ever needed, every God you needed to meet, every God you needed to come in contact, all of the divine you needed to come in contact with is already contained on the inside. Sometimes we will look at other people and situations and favorable situations. We'll find ourselves comparing. We'll find ourselves looking at ourselves as less than. But the reality of it is if you go inside and you say, you know what, let me deal with what I haven't dealt with. Let me deal with uh, the pain I've been holding on to. Let me deal with the self-doubt, the judgment, uh, the negative self-talk. Let me deal with all the things that I've pushed down, that I've tried to hide from. If you start dealing with that, you're going to go through a shift. Come on. This is why I keep trying to tell y'all, uh, 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 spiritual awakening is an ugly process. It's a snotty nose process. It is a crying all the time process. It is a dark circle around your eyes kind of process. Everybody wants to make it, oh, 
lovey-dovey and happy and joyful. It ain't always joyful because there are things you're going to have to confront about you. There are things you're going to have to confront about your parents. There are things you're going to have to confront about how you were raised, your attachment style, your communication style. You might even have been raised by uh, 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 somebody that was self-love deficient, somebody that was a codependent, somebody that was a uh, a covert narcissist. Mm. You might have been raised by somebody who was broken internally, Mm. but guess what? You're going to have to embrace them, but you will never be able to embrace them until you first learn to embrace what they made, baby, what they created in you. That's how you go back to them and embrace them for who they are. That's how you go back and say, you know what? For as broken as you are, you got me along pretty far. Do you get what I'm saying? A lot of times, man, we will grow up with resentment because we had or have expectations of who they should have been and how come you couldn't have been this way how come you weren't like this when i was coming up it's unfair that you got all new kids and you treat them differently than the ones that you birthed your own My you Lord. sometimes you got to let people off the hook because people are evolving along their path in a different way than you are the way you heal might not be the way they heal. Baby. The way you reveal might not be the way they reveal. Woo. And the way you conceal might not be the way they conceal. See, you got to understand something about everybody's journey. Even though we're in the same classroom, we are on different roads. And guess what? There's different types of traffic on the road I'm on than the traffic on your road. Some of us may not even have any damn traffic. We might be able to get to where we need to go because there's nothing impeding us based on something in the past life that we have done, based on something in a past life that we have accomplished. Mm -hmm. Maybe your brothers and sisters, maybe your fathers and mothers got some shit they need to clear out in this lifetime that you had the opportunity to clear out in the last life, life, lifetime. So guess what? Maybe it's not your job to judge on how fast or slow they learn. Yeah. Huh? Maybe it's not your job to judge them on when they get it and you already got it. Just be happy and thankful that you got it. Because guess what? Whatever you get can get taken back. Ooh. You better recognize, you better recognize humility is watch this now humility is the lubrication for spiritual elevation Mm. humility gratitude do you see what i'm saying Mm -hmm. be thankful that you understand yeah don't be cocky and disrespectful that you got an understanding be thankful that you got an understanding Be grateful that you got an understanding. Wherever there is an egoic, self-righteous motherfucker who think they know it all, you know they don't know enough. That's when you know you don't know enough. Huh? Mm. Be thankful you know a little something. Be thankful God made a way for you because... You could have been like the person you judging right now. Mm. God made him a different way. And maybe he got to go that way in order to get your understanding. But it, you're not the judge of how he gets there. You're not the judge of how she gets there. And you should keep your mouth off of my process. Huh? Keep your mouth off of my process. Keep your mouth off of your partner's process. Keep your mouth off of your father and your mother's process. Your mouth should only be on your process. Make your mouth respect your process. How about that? Huh? We appreciate everybody oh, for staying yes. with us. Oh, my, I told my, you my, I would have extended it a little longer. Oh, my, we my. appreciate everybody for hitting that oh. cash app. If you found today's work edifying, oh, my, my. go to my cash yeah. app and drop twos and fuse. We appreciate everybody for showing their love. Yes. I would appreciate y'all to con- for continuing to support. Thank you, Brandon Terry. He dropped 1111. S. Hunter dropped $2. We appreciate it. I hope you guys learned a little something today. 
I'm so sick of self-righteous, goofy motherfuckers fronting like they special. Front like we all special, goddammit. We all unique. Everybody wanna front like they got it all together. Stop fronting and like you got it together and just be happy that you're going in the right direction, huh? Just be happy that you woke up today and uh, you found yourself in a better place than you were. Don't try to look back and judge and criticize and condemn because you might wind up where you left. Huh? You yeah. might wind up where you just left. Amen. All right. Woo. There we go. I'm done. You done? Thank y'all. I'm gone. Oh my God. Okay. But Zoe, what? Okay. Bye y'all. Bye. <laughs>